I'm Chris Duke, and this is Motors. Welcome to Motors. Today we're going to cross the automotive customization lines and teach you the basics of welding and how affordable it can really be. We're going to cover MIG welding as it's the easiest to begin with, accessories you're going to need to do the job, basic setup, as well as some safety precautions and operation. Learning to weld does not require a degree or extensive schooling. Many people are able to teach themselves how to weld out of their own garage. One of my personal friends, Brian, did just that and is here today to share some tips and tricks on how to get started with a basic welding setup. Welcome to the show, Brian. Thanks for being here. Hey, Chris. Thanks for having me. Great. We've got a Hobart Handler 140 right here. What's the cool thing about this particular MIG welder? Chris, this MIG welder is great. It's a 115-volt unit. It's very portable, and that means you can run it off of a standard outlet in your garage, so it's very That's easy cool. to get started with. So, Brian, what sorts of things can I do with this MIG welder? Well, Chris, this unit is great for automotive and household jobs. You can do things like basic exhaust repairs, uh -huh. auto body repairs. You can make custom brackets for mounting horns or fog lights. And it's also good for other around-the-house jobs, uh, fence repairs, things like that. Okay, pretty cool. Let's take a look at some of the things that we've got here that uh, are going to help us weld. Some of the accessories we have here are wire for our MIG welder. Uh -huh. We have our MIG pliers. We have a wire brush and hammer for cleaning up welds when we're done. All right. We have clamps to hold our pieces together as we're working, and most importantly, our safety helmet. Now, what's cool about this helmet, Brian, is it's custom airbrush by Barbara Luck at Rippin Designs. Didn't she do a good job? She did an awesome job. Now, in addition to all those other things, you're going to need an angle grinder, some extra tips, some nozzle gel, some gloves, and we got this paintball cylinder also from Hobart. It's great for portability, and it just holds CO2. And it's great because even on weekends, you can get this thing filled up at your local sporting goods store for about five bucks. Very nice. Yeah, so let's take a look at how we set everything up. So we're going to start, first thing here is we have a spool of wire, and this goes right here inside the, inside the welder. Now, one of the things to be aware of, this wire is tightly round. If you're not careful, when you go to unwind it, it will unravel and spool up in your face. So you want to uh, have some extra precaution there. Okay, after mounting and securing the spool as per the instructions, we're going to begin to feed the wire into our welder. Uh, be careful as you unspool this so the wire does not come loose. Cut off any, any bent ends on your wire and begin to feed it in. As you get the wire through the, uh, through the rollers and into the hose, secure it in place and turn on the welder so we can start to feed it through. Pull the trigger and the wire should feed through cleanly. When it comes out the other end, release the trigger and you're ready to move on. Okay, Chris, we've connected the regulator and hose that comes with our welder to our gas cylinder here. Okay, what kind of gas is in there, Brian? This is a mix of argon and CO2. Okay. Is it uh, flammable? Is this thing going to blow up the, the garage or what? No, it's a completely inert gas. It's completely safe. Its function is to provide some shielding around the welding arc as we're working. Okay. Now what's up with this chart here? Well, this is, this is really handy. This helps you pick the right wire and polarity settings for whatever kind of material you're working with. We've gone with a uh, .030 wire today because we're going to be working with some thinner steel like you might find in typical auto body applications. Okay. What's the uh, polarity over here that I see? Depending on which wire and gas setup you use, you might change the polarity from electrode positive to electrode negative. It's just a matter of undoing these two bolts here and switching the wires around, and the, the welder lays out which polarity you use for any given application. Okay, seems easy enough. Now, there's another thing here called flux core wire, which you can use without gas for small jobs. It does get a little bit messy, though. So, Brian, when it comes time to actually do some welding, can I just wear a T-shirt and some shorts and some flip-flops, or, or what's the deal here? Well, Chris, it's important we have the right safety equipment. You're going to want a good, sturdy leather jacket, pair of gloves, as well as you want to make sure you're wearing uh, something like jeans and some closed-toed shoes or work boots. Okay, so basically head-to-toe coverage, and, and why is that? Well, there's, there's two important reasons. One, when you're welding, you'll get some hot slag coming off your welds. There's also UV light on the uh, arc itself, and you can actually get a sunburn if you're not properly uh, protected. Sunburn and slag does not sound good to me, so not let's, so let's suit up and uh, check this thing out. All right, let's get started. All right. All 
Now that we're all suited up, what are the final steps we need to perform in order to get started and do some welding? All right, Chris, let me show you. Uh, we'll start. We'll turn our, turn our welder on. Come over here. Open up the gas cylinder. You only need about a quarter turn on this. And we're going to adjust our regulator to get a gas flow of about between 20 and 30 here on the regulator. You'll see this needle will go down when we actually start welding. And we're starting with some uh, eighth inch thick mild steel. So we've got our wire feed set to 30 and we're starting with a voltage of 2. Now if we come over here, we've already got our pieces cleaned up and prepared. It's very important when you're doing any MIG welding that you remove any rust or grease or contaminants on your steel. So we've already sanded these down with our angle grinder. We've got a good solid clamp and our ground is attached here. And finally, we want to uh, prepare our gun. So you don't want to have too much wire stick out when you begin. Usually about 3 8 inch to a quarter inch is plenty. So I'm going to trim off this excess wire before we get started. Now all that's left is to put on our welding helmets and give it a try. All right, let's go. Okay, Chris, so uh, we're going to start by just trying a simple butt weld on these two pieces here. Okay. Now there's two main ways you can go about this. There's what's known as a push technique where, as the name implies, you're pushing the gun past your weld. Or more commonly, and what's easier to get started with is a pull technique where we're starting up here and kind of pulling the gun as we go along. So I'm going to demonstrate a pull technique on these two pieces right here. Okay, now do you go straight back or do you make a pattern? Uh, you you want to, as you can see, there, there's a slight gap between these. So you'll see as I move the gun, we'll be doing uh, small arcs, kind of tracing the front of our arc uh, and following it along as we go. We tried to break this weld apart, didn't have any success. That's a very good indicator that we've picked the right wire speed and voltage settings for the material that we're working with. Okay. Had we actually been able to break this apart, it would have been a good indication that this was a, a cold or inferior weld. Uh, the wire speed felt right, so had the weld not stuck, I would have increased the voltage a little bit to get a little more penetration into the metal. So it's always good to test it out on some scrap metal before you work on the real thing? A absolutely. Get okay. a feel for the material you're working for, get your welder dialed in, and then proceed to your actual work. All right, well, let's try something a little bit thinner, maybe some automotive type of uh, metal.